Hello and good morning. Um, it's Friday morning again, so you're live or on replay with the Songbird Stamper. It's a bit wet this morning, um, a bit wet and dreary, and um, sadly I have no internet, so I'm hoping this goes well. I've set up a, a, a VPN from my phone, so it should work. Um, I was just sat here trying to print something, going, why isn't it, why isn't it printing? Um, and then realised, obviously, that the printer is on the Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi is not working so um, that answered that question for me after about five ten minutes to be fair it took quite a long time so what have I got for you this morning I'm gonna be working with one of my favorite suites from the um, August to December mini catalogue I still haven't got my head around that the snowflake splendor suite good morning Lynn how are you doing long time no see um, so I'm gonna be working with this suite today stamps and the dies and the papers um it's the set that we're going to be using for the november class to go which booking close i'm closing bookings tomorrow rather than today because i've got a virtual craft fair tomorrow um so bookings close tomorrow uh, for that um i was trying to print off the poster to show you but it didn't work so i'll have to tell you instead um, we've got the basic kit classes, £15, um, if you wanted to add on some refills, because we're going to do watercolouring, it's going to be a watercolouring based class, so it should be a lot of fun. Um, the refills will be £25, um, add the stamps for £48, add the dies and have a whole lot of it for £72 posted. Um, so those are your options. Um, but yeah, I've got something a little bit different today. Um, I think I got fed up with making cards, so I've been making a few more 3D projects and something popped up. Um, which I'm going to show you. So I'll spin you over. I'll try and find the video on here and then we will get stamping. Let's see what you can see. A short visit watching full later. Bless you, Linny. Well, it's nice to see you. Absolutely nice to have you visit. I hope you enjoy whatever it is you're up to. Sorry, I'm just trying to tilt this around a little bit because you're a bit wonky. There we go. Um, so there's the class kit options if you did want to join in the class like i say bookings close tomorrow all the details on my website www.thesongbirdstamper.co.uk um so this is where it all started and i made a box um it's not a snowflake it's a poinsettia but in these colors you can barely see um i did a technique here which was to stamp in white ink onto white card and then what I did was just sponge over the other colours of the inks. Um, and it was this, this is the technique that we ended up with. I can't remember where the template for this box came from. It was from a book. I think it was one I got from the Rowan's uh, Craft um, secondhand shop. Um, and it's lovely, this, this opens up, you can see that this is the closure here. So that's my little gift box. We're not going to make one of those today though, I just thought I'd show you. A bit of a tease. Um, we're going to make something a little bit different. So, what have I got? Um, this is essentially what we're going to be making. And it's going to look something like this. Good morning, Anita. How are you doing? Um, and we're going to have three of them. It's going to be a hanging picture frame. So I'm going to put some ribbon on. We're going to do a few more of these. And we're going to, it's going to hang down. I don't have one to show you because I haven't made it yet. Um, but uh, we're going to make it together. That's what I thought we'd do this morning. So these are the, the stamps. I'm not going to use many of these actually, but probably just some of these little snowflakes, maybe a couple of these on my decoration um, and some of the sentiments. But it's the dies that we're going to mainly use. I've done quite a lot of the pre-die cutting. Um, these are the dies that you get in this set. Huh, oh, put these in the wrong pocket. They don't live in there. <laughs> They live somewhere else. So let's pop those up on the shelf. So these are the dies that I'm going to be using in the upcoming class as well. Oops. This one, this is gorgeous. Oh, I'm glad to hear you're good. Um, this cuts out. It's not a. It's not a full cutout die. It actually cuts out each individual part, so you can see through. Um, you've got ones that cut out the stamps. You've got this one here. Cuts out a lovely frame. I do love that. Oh, it was nice to see you the other day as well, Anita. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've seen most people. 
And because I come so early in the morning, I don't normally knock on the don't normally knock on the door. I see the curtains are closed. Uh, we're going to be using these snowflakes though today. Yeah, I see the curtains are closed in people. I go around and do my deliveries, my stamping up deliveries. And um, curtains are closed, I don't knock. And most people's curtains are closed at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so what I've got, um, we're going to be working with some grey board. So grey board is grey board. Um, it's thick cardboard. This came with some papers from Stampin' Up, I think. I did buy some, um, and it's what I used for the mini album. This mini album we made, the cover is made with grey board, but I can't find, I've hunted high and low. Good morning, Jill, nice to see you. How are you doing, my lovely? Um, and I cannot, for the life of me, find my packs of grey board that I bought. So luckily I had some thick enough. Um, some of the stuff that comes is a little bit thinner, so you do want something a little bit weighty just so that it holds its own so i've started with a, a piece of that we need three of them i've already decorated one i've already cut another and this is the one that we're going to do i'm going to show you how to do this so i've cut it to 12 by 12 um and i've got my self-healing mat here i take my ruler and my pencil so it's 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters and what i'm going to do is just mark at two centimeters Oh, Jill. Oh, Jill. It's really raining here. Um, a friend of mine has gone to Legoland today and so I said to her, don't get too wet. And luckily it's not going to be raining up there, they hope, today. But it's absolutely soaking. I just went out to feed the rabbits this morning and I didn't put a coat on because I thought, oh, it's just a little bit of drizzle. But it was that drizzle that just gets you so wet. So I'm marking at two centimetres and ten centimetres on every single side. Um, so every corner now has a little mark. You probably can't see them. Um, but what I'm going to do is join those up. So I'm just going to put my little ruler here and here. Join those lines up and it's going to give us a frame in the middle and because we're going to cover this with paper it really doesn't matter about these extra lines that we've drawn on we won't see those so we're going to again take my ruler and do be careful when you get to this stage um, use a sharp craft knife um, but do be careful that you don't cut yourself so the way I do it because cutting grey board is quite hard you do need to press quite hard um if you want to get through it in one go so i don't and um, so you see i've not cut through there i've just with my ruler in place i've scored okay i've, I've made a, a score mark in there so now with my hand well away because my hand with the ruler is quite close to the knife um i'm quite clumsy so then with my hand further away because i've already got the groove there i'm less likely to slip as well and so i can just pull that down and then go back in the other side and then we should have a, a line where we've cut all the way through so I'm going to do that on all four sides yeah I haven't seen the forecast for today so I don't know if it's going to be like this all day today or whether just a little bit but um I've got to go and do the weekly shop and then I'm going to go back to bed because I've got to go to work tonight. So that'll be my Friday afternoon. So I don't mind it in the winter. I don't mind going to sleep in the afternoon in the winter. But um, during the week, during the summer rather, when it's beautiful outside, I do struggle sometimes to to want to go to bed so it's the last days of the paper sale that's going on at stamping up at the moment so if anybody is still interested in getting some papers um i'll show you the, the ones we're going to be using today these are on the sale so they're actually down to nine pound and 14 pence at the moment and these are absolutely stunning. Probably one of my favourite papers. OK, 
at these gorgeous, gorgeous snowflakes. I might, I am tempted to get another pack. I've got an order going in tomorrow. Obviously the class booking is closed tomorrow. So if anybody does want anything, just give me a shout. Lovely watercolour. So that's what we're going to use. Um, I decided to use something, I've, I'm using this one. I wanted to use something that was um, not too patterned. So what I've done is I've cut them. Um, I actually had an off cut, so ideally you want to cut them to 15 centimetres by 15 centimetres. But you can see I've got one smaller than the other, so this one's going to be a little bit more tricky to do. And all I've done is put my frame in the middle. 15 by 15 would be the perfect size for you. This is just going to be a little smaller. And then what I've done on the reverse side, so not on the pattern side that you want, on the reverse side, just draw round the frame. You possibly could skip this step if you wanted to and just go straight to sticking it down. Um, but this is just the way I found to do it. So what I'm going to do now is from corner to corner, I'm just going to mark across and then I'm going to draw a square in the middle just roughly and we're just going to chop this out so it doesn't need to be perfect. It's definitely not perfect. We're just going to chop that out so I need my mat back. I'm not even following the lines I drew so you could do this by eye if you wanted to I'm just showing you how you can measure it if you're not comfortable so we've chopped a square out of the middle okay and then what I'm going to do is pop this in back in here and this time I am going to glue it so like I say you probably could have, could have cut that step out um, it just it was easier for me without this in place. So I've just used some multi-purpose liquid glue. So strong this glue. For years I used something else and then I won some of this at a raffle and I never ever looked back. So I've just popped that back in place there. Give that a couple of seconds to dry while I put the lid on. And then all I'm going to do is take my craft knife and I'm going to run up my pencil line from the corner and I'm cutting right into the corner on this, on this side, on the inside, cut right up to the corner. That will make sense in a minute. Okay, so those are the insides and then what you're going to do is glue them round. So we're going to fold them round here. Okay, and I've just, again, I've just used Tombow wet glue. Just tease it along. Because it's wet, you've not stuck it down instantly first go. If you wanted to do that, you could use the um, Seal Plus, which is a really, really strong adhesive. Mine's just run out. So I probably ought to put a new one in there. But this just means I can manipulate it a little bit more. So I'm just pulling that along here. So for those of you who are um, new, welcome. Nice to have you joining us. Um, I used to do a Tuesday and a Friday Facebook Live, so just to uh, recap, last um, last week, the week before, I decided not to continue with my Tuesday Facebook Lives. I started them up during lockdown, um, but it was just getting a little bit um, too much for me. So with these, I may have stuck this um, too close to the edge. Um, we'll see in a minute, and if I have, then we'll have to 
butcher it slightly um, so so don't make these too big you certainly don't want them overlapping you don't even want them coming up to the end here because what we're going to do is pop this on afterwards as a backing so note those are perfect but in literally a millimeter more and it would have been too much so the next step is to cut these corners off because we need to fold these over so we need to cut the corners away but what I'm actually going to do is about a millimeter and a half away from the corner I'll hold it up to the camera in a sec so that you can see hopefully I'm hoping you can see I've not cut right up to the edge because if you do, you'll see some of the grey board through. Can you see in the corners here, we can see the grey board? That to me is acceptable because nobody's really going to look in there and see it. And we're going to cover most of the corners up anyway on the outside. But you would definitely see here um, like this. I've made a bit of a mistake on this first one that I did. And you can see here. I just hold it still the gray board poking through and that's not what we want we don't want that so we'll just leave it a millimeter or so away from the edge and then cut at a diagonal away from here that one went a bit funny and then what we're going to do is fold those over as well just had a text from um, Lizzie Lizzie if you're watching no I'm, I'm gonna be good I'm gonna save my box um, stamping up um, on stage is coming very soon um, it's next weekend not this weekend but next weekend um, and I've got a goodie bag but I'm I'm being very well behaved and I don't want to see in it um, I'm gonna try and save it for the Friday so that I get all the excitement but I don't know if I'll be able to wait that long so I'm just gonna fold this over here and wait for that glue to dry and can you see there the corners look much better than my other one you can see a tiny bit poking through and it's just practice it's just trial and error um, but this is a handmade decoration and with everything else that's going to go on on it um, I don't think people are going to notice But this is the, the hardest one. If you cut yours to 15 by 15, it would be easier. Um, you'd have more of a, a gap here, more paper to fold over. So this is a little bit more challenging than it needs to be. So again, I've cut that one a little bit wrong, but... Um, it's okay so what I'm going to do now is just fold those um, turn that over and just on a couple of them where you've got too much paper now so some of them we've got too little some of them we've got too much what I'm going to do is take my pair of snips and just snip off the pointy bit I mean I guess it's like cutting a seam eventually that would kind of come away but um, it seems to be fine for me doing it like that way so there's our second one so we've got one done and our second one and I'm going to do another one good morning Jeanette how are you doing long time no speak thank you so much for your card I, I meant to um, text you and say thank you but like with a lot of things I haven't quite got around to it <laughs> This is be the story of my life at the moment. So again, pop that in the middle, draw around it. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I hope I'm on camera. 
My camera, my picture on my computer is very fuzzy, but it could be because I'm, I've got no Wi-Fi today, so I'm, I've got to do everything through the phone network. So I've managed to set up a virtual portable network or a hotspot or whatever you call it, a VPN or a hotspot, and um, we're going that way. So I've drawn my crosses in the middle. Um, then I'm just going to draw. A rough square doesn't need to be exact not too small though remember and then I'm going to take my craft knife and just cut that square out oh good oh I'm glad you're well is it what's the weather doing down there today it's, it's bucketing it down here it's horrible so pull that away. You could save that and use that on another project if you wanted to, the little scraps. And then take your grey board and stick that down. You can do so much with grey board. It's really underlooked, and especially because we get so much of it kind of free with our papers from stamping up. Like recycling is definitely a good way to make use of it. Um, so I don't know which way around I've pulled that off of here actually. It didn't look like it was the didn't look like it was right the way I was sticking it back down. It shouldn't really matter. I mean it's just an odd millimetre here or there from my measuring. So let's stick that down. Then we'll take the craft knife again and right into the corners and up to the corner of the square that you've created loosely this is not all that accurate actually and then we can just fold those over went to um sainsbury's yesterday and i've invested in this ridiculously fluffy fleece top um i've just been getting so cold and i've got my pajama fleecy i bought some new fleece pajamas i've still got my pajama bottoms on keep me nice and cozy and warm so I shall not look forward to when I finish this I have to go out and do the shopping so I've got to take these off and put some normal clothes on but yeah Russ is always saying to me well if you dressed appropriately then you wouldn't be cold so let's pop some glue on there and spin those round He's gone out to play golf in the rain. Oh, bless him. He is a trooper. Hoping to play nine holes before the deluge. Uh, oh, is it windy? Luckily, we haven't got too much wind. I haven't seen the forecast, though. I'm hoping it's not too windy for work tonight. So, again, right here in the corner. Don't go all the way to the corner. About a millimetre and a half um, away from the corner. And then just cut on the diagonal. It's not an exact science. You'll do a few and go, ah, that's what I need to do. So a millimetre away from the half in the corner and then cut away on either side. And then pop some glue on. You can either put glue on first and then do the folding. I do tend to try and just score it I suppose into place so all I'm doing is I'm taking the grey board in my hand good morning Mo and pulling it towards me to make sure I've got the paper that gives us the first crease and then folding it over and then that gives us the second crease okay so there's our creases and it just makes makes it a bit easier than when you put the glue on So it's my birthday next week. 
we're hoping to go away for um, just a night, I think, next week, which will be lovely. Be a nice little break, just somewhere a little bit different. But then it's on stage, so um, we'll be back. So I'm literally just going to go away for the one night, I think. Back in time for on stage on Friday, which will be fabulous. So I won't be here next Friday, sadly. I will be partying with my fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrators who have signed up to go to on stage. Um, like virtual partying, obviously not can't have a real party sadly it's normally a really really good event where everybody gets together and we were hoping to go up to um telford birmingham somewhere like that where it normally is and because it's my birthday weekend i was really looking forward to that this year so sad to not have that but it would be very nice to virtually get together with everybody um, but i will miss you guys next friday so i've now um sealed in my frame and I'm just going to go around and any corners that I think need it, I'm just going to chop off so that I've not got pointy corners, I've got flat corners. Okay, so that is our three frames. So I think I'm done with the cutting board. That's our three frames done. And you can do whatever you want with these. I mean, you can arrange them into different patterns. I'm going to make a hanging frame. Oh, it is, it is so much fun, Anita. Honestly, I can't tell you. I don't think there's words to describe how much I love on stage. Honestly, I get to see new products. We get to have demonstrations. We get to do some crafting. Um, so I'm going to try and arrange these. I seem to have two. I must have used the same paper. I seem to have two exactly the same. Um... So I think we're going to go like that, try and arrange them some kind of way. Then what we've got is a piece of Highland Heather cardstock. So let me put those to one side that way up. This is going to create the backing, I think. I think I quite like that. Um, I'm failing for my words, so you're just going to have to watch along. Hmm? Watch rather than listen. So that's going to go on there like that. Then this piece here is 11 and a half centimetres by 11 and a half centimetres. This bit, this bit is about 10 by 10 centimetres. I don't know, really. I think it was just a scrap I had. So let's measure it. It's about nine and a half, but nine and a half, ten, something like that. That's going to go on there. And then this Highland Heather is going to go over the top and sandwich that in there. Okay. So you need enough of a border around so that you can stick this on. Oh, it is it honestly? I'm, gu I'm absolutely gutted we can't go to the actual event this year, but hey ho it is what it is um so that's that you could use white you can use whatever you want to decorate your your panel um i've got one of these as well so i might just ch chop that off and then butt that to the edge once i've done some stamping i think we will stick that down um but what i've got is some ribbon so we need to make this into a hanger so we're going to hang it so let me chop this off i was just me experimenting um, I don't know if you can see, I've coloured this Snowflake Splendour ribbon with some alcohol markers and I've done it in Balmy Blue, that's that one, and Highland Heather and I just need to prefer which one, see which one I prefer. I think Highland Heather. So what I've done is taken my, did I do dark or light I wonder? Probably light, I think. So I've taken my light Highland Heather blend and work out how much ribbon I want. It's quite a, um, a hard ribbon. So it's um, not a soft, flexible ribbon, this one. It's quite hard. So I'm just going to chop that there. 
that's plenty for this bit and then I'm going to colour this with my stamping blend because this is alcohol it will dry pretty quickly um, you could do this with the inks as well if you don't have the blends you could take a dauber and run the ink across it but um, it doesn't dry quite as easily as this one so you can colour loads of different types of ribbons this way and then what I'm going to do is stick this bit on first I think I'm debating whether to cut this down in size a little bit let's try nine by nine The hole is eight by eight, so this will then stick over there just by a cent, just by half a centimetre. Um, so I'm going to pop some glue around the very edges, really thin strip of glue right around the edge. And then I'm going to pop my frame on top of it so I can see this way whether I'm covering all the glue. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. So just pop that down on there. Then I'm going to take some seal plus. So then mine's just run out. I'm hoping I've got another one. If I haven't, I'm going to have to go renegade. No, I haven't. So we're going to be a bit naughty. We're going to use fast fuse. I still have some of this left. Um, because for sticking ribbon on, so that was going to be my top. For sticking ribbon on, you need a really um, strong adhesive. Well, we're going to sandwich it all in together. Now you can be as precise or unprecise as you want. Here, I'm going to measure four centimeters in from the side and then stick one end of my ribbon down. I'm measuring four centimeters in from this side and I'm going to stick the other end of my ribbon down like that. And that's going to give me my hanger. Yeah, I quite like that in the purple because you've got the kind of undertone. Oh, I need a bit more glue got the undertone of um, the silver and the blue in there from the natural colour of the ribbon and then just highlighted in Highland Heather. So that's our ribbon on there. Oh thanks Anita. I don't know if we'll make all of them today or whether we'll just do a couple. We'll wait and see. And then what we're going to do is pop this over the back. Okay, and I'm going to use fast fuse again for this. I'm going to use, you could use tape, red tape would be amazing for this. Um, I'm just going to use a very strong adhesive. And pop that. Do you know what I realised today? I haven't blogged for almost two weeks. So that's the job for today, I think, if I get time, um, is to blog a card I made in the week. But I've been having so much me time at the health club. It's been lovely. It's been really, really nice, but that doesn't really help you guys keep up with me. So, or me keep up with you. So that's our backing now on there. So that's, I mean, you could just make one of these, a lovely little gift. Um, I'm going to decorate this one um, so I've got the stamp set um, I kind of need to figure out who this is for um, oh, I'm making pretty sentiments on it I think I'd like to give it to somebody we also do have this which is wrapped in Christmas um, that may have some sentiments on there so I'll get that one out but I do like this one. In the coldest moments of the year, my heart is warm because you're near.
And this one, May Your Season Sparkle and Snowflake Wishes for a Merry Christmas. So I've got this label, I've got quite a few labels I cut out. And I'm wondering if this would go just on the top right hand side of there. So let's grab a block, pop that on there. And then I'm going to use Highland Heather ink, I think, to stamp this down. Ah, <gasps> no, burgled last night. Oh, Jeanette, it, it does, where you live does sound like a um, safe place to live. That's really shocking. Oh, you need to be really careful. You can't be too careful. In the coldest moments of the year, my heart is warm because you're near. And then what I'm going to do is cut that away. Anita, you said yes, please, but what? What are you saying yes, please, to? I've lost. I'm. There's a big delay on Facebook, and I sometimes can't catch up. Um. So you let me know what you said yes, please, to. But yes, I am thoroughly enjoying the gym. Yesterday I went and I did a half an hour kind of on the treadmill, 20 minutes on the bike, and. Um, and then I just went and sat in the jacuzzi and the sauna, which was lovely. So I've just trimmed that off um, so that I can kind of butt that up against the side there. I am debating whether to trim that off down the bottom as well, but we'll, we'll keep going and we'll see how we feel. Oh, please, I'm enjoying it. I am, yeah, honestly, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's brilliant. So I'm just going to trim the end off here. And then that's going to stick on there, I think. We've got some die-cut snowflakes. So I've used the all three sizes um, of the snowflake. I've got... Balmy Blue Glimmer, we've got White, we've got Highland Heather and Normal Balmy Blue. And I'm just going to try and layer some of these together. What have I got in my little pile in here? I'm going to need to cut more of these for sure, I think. So I've got a balmy blue one and a highland heather one. I don't know if that might be too big. That looks a little bit better. And then you can always use some of the ribbon as well. You could colour the ribbon in like we've done there um, and tuck that under if you wanted to. Or you can leave it as it is. Then we've got some gems somewhere as well. So these are the adhesive backed gems. As you can see, I've used quite a lot of. <laughs> they are lovely. I wonder how they would look in the centre of our snowflakes. Oh yes, I like that. Right, so let's get sticking, shall we? Let's stick this one down first. I was thinking I could do some stamping, and then maybe I'll do some balmy blue, really, really faint, stamped off balmy blue, small snowflakes. Let's, these really, really small ones, if you can see those. And I'm just going to stamp off like really, really lightly. So I've stamped off twice because otherwise they'll detract from the sentiment. We don't want that. We just want a hint of sparkle going on behind there. Blue sparkle, but you know, a hint of something. And then we'll pop some glue. Oh, 
Oh, I hope they manage to get hold of your neighbours and let them know this. And honestly, there's nothing worse. When Dad was burgled, it was horrible. He dealt with it really well, actually. I, I, luckily, him and Robert dealt with it. I, I struggled. I really struggled. I don't think they took. I don't think they took an awful lot. I think they left more behind than they took. Some stuff fell out of their bag as they were burgling him. The police were like, these are your pearl necklaces on the floor. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> but the police just kind of left them with him and said, if we get anybody else reporting them lost, we'll, um, we'll get in touch. So with the snowflakes, I'll do this on camera. Sorry, I've got a really bad habit of pulling it off camera. I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue around that bit. Hey, good morning. How are you doing, Sarah? You all right? Finished your list. Well, that's good going. All I've seemed to have done this morning is add to my list. <laughs> then pop that on there. I've been doing a little bit of website planning this morning. Um, so when you stick these down, obviously just be aware that um, some of it is coming off the page. Um, so you don't want to pop glue on the back of there. It wouldn't be the end of the world if you did. Um, but you don't need to so just pop a little bit of glue on three of those you can actually get away with popping some on four put a little bit on there Do you, it makes a big difference doesn't it i'm glad you can see that anita it just felt like it needed something behind the words there and it's, a, it's a really nice set where you get lots of different um snowflakes so I'm going to pop some Balmy Blue Glimmer. We've got some down here. I love this. I've just ordered another pack of this. Oh, look how sparkly it is. So pretty. And it's the glimmer paper that um, doesn't shed. So you won't get glitter. So if you like working with glit glittery things. Oh, your morning list. Your afternoon list is very long. Goodness me. You are organised, Sarah. Um, if you like glimmer paper that doesn't shed and you like work on glitter but you don't like glimmer uh, glitter everywhere then this is the product for you so again i'm just going to put my thumb over the two i don't want to glue and then i can pop some glue on the rest of these i had to write a to-do list yesterday because it was just i sat there and thought have i got anything to do i was like yeah i've got to do this i've got to do that i've got to do the other i was like oh actually i've got quite a lot to do I just haven't written it down anywhere so it didn't feel like I did so that's our first panel of our frame I have made a bit of a mistake you'll see what that is in a minute and I would tell you how to rectify that so this is why you watch me first and then you make them for yourselves later I even made this mistake when I made another one the other day so I'm just going to pop some blue gems in the middle of my snowflakes there like that what it is is that we're actually going to put some more frames on so we're going to do another one so in order to do another one we need to put more ribbon on in order to put more ribbon on we needed to have stuck it under here so i'm hoping my little spatula tool i know honestly the glimmer is amazing isn't it sarah like you say it's a must for some christmas sparkle this is the take your pick tool um <clears throat> attachment you get the ball this is a fabulous tool if you don't have one of these it's is it less than a 10 less than it's not less than 10 i think it was let me have a look if i can find it quickly enough for you Which I bet I can't. Uh, do, do, take it to one five nine, page one five nine. Bear with me. This is yes, yeah, nine pounds. Nine pounds. For this so you get the thing that allows you to pick gems up you get 
two of those in here because I bought refills when I bought mine and then realized I didn't need them because I mean I've had this for a long time now I haven't even got onto the spare one that comes with it so you get your putty end and then you get a ballpoint pen and then you get a small ballpoint pen and then you get this spatula end which is yes so this is everything I use it for just to undo the glue that I've put on <laughs> And then you get a pokey tool. Fab, nine quid. I thought it was more expensive than that. Um, so let's just pop that to one side and we'll make some more ribbon. So, oh, the snowflake DSP, Jeanette, isn't it stunning? So I'm just cutting a length like this. Doesn't need to be all that long. Two of those. And then grab my Highland Heather again and just color the ribbon. Yeah, I'm tempted to get some more snowflake paper as well, but I probably don't need it. It's so pretty. There's always a difference, isn't there, between need and want. Lads at work, when they go to the shop as well, they say, do you want anything? Well, yeah, but do I need anything? Is probably the question you ought to ask. So four centimetres, and then you can just poke that in now that you've lifted it up. You can just poke your ribbon in and then push that back down again. It should hold. Four centimetres. Poke the ribbon in. And push that down. Yeah. Yep, so that's fine. It's not holding a lot of weight. It's just holding a couple more of these. So we've got them now at the same width here. So let's make another one. And then probably I'll finish it off camera later because it'll be 11 o'clock by then. Um, so what's next? It's this one next. So I'll show you how I did the background because I do like that. Um, I'll show you how I did this snowflake background. Grab a little piece of card and we established that we wanted it just over the size of the hole. So we wanted about nine by nine. used the embossing folder my desk is such a mess now um i don't know where anything is <laughs> here it is so i've used the embossing folder um that comes with the suite and it's the most gorgeous snowflakes absolutely stunning I've taken my Whisper White, I've been using this more and more, it's funny isn't it with tools and things, they go through phases with them, um, the Whisper White Craft ink pad and I'm just running it over the inside of the embossing folder, so you can do this on both sides um, and it will give you a different effect, I'm doing it on I don't know which side as well, I can't remember. So I'm just, I did it on both sides last time. I'm going to do it on both sides. One will give you a debossed look and one will give you an embossed look. Um, so pop the card on there. So I've just run the craft pad over both sides of the embossing folder. Grab that down. Just make sure you don't move it once you pop it into the embossing folder. And then we're going to run that through the big shot. Not the big shot, the cut and emboss machine. So, because it's a thin um, embossing folder, we can use the base plate and then just our normal cutting plates. We don't use the die adapter and we don't need the 3D platform. So that goes through there. So there's our snowflakes. Now because it's the Whisper White, it is only faint, but it just changes it. It just changes the colour of the paper enough. Can you see that? To give it an almost distressed look. But what I'm going to do is I've got my sponge. 
I'm just going to add some more craft white ink around the edges and then just highlighting those snowflakes in the middle so they don't look out of place. So that's how we make you've never tried it and neater yeah it's fabulous ink up with the stamping up ink pads um works really well ink up the inside um and like i say on one of them on one side you'll get the um, a different look you'll get a different look on either side basically so have a play with it see which you prefer um and you'll either get the raised areas highlighted in the ink color and or you'll get the darker colours. You don't need to use a white ink pad. You can use any colour ink pad you want. We definitely did it in a class, I'm sure. Maybe, um, yeah, you didn't miss many classes. So what I'm going to do now is just pop a little rim of glue around here. Just around the outside. And then we're going to pop that down over the top of that. Try and get it as central as possible. But as long as you've covered the glue up, you'll be fine. Oh, sorry. I'm missing my head there in shot. So I'm going to do the ribbon now before um, I forget again, I think. So what I'm going to do is, we've got this one, so we need to attach this one to this one, if that makes sense. Just need that glue to hold. So I'm lining it up on my grid paper. Grid paper is fantastic for helping you to line anything up. So I'm going to pop some fast fuse. Again, I'm being a bit rebellious red tape or you want um, snail plus which is a fantastic adhesive oh gilding flakes with the embossing folder a bit messy but you you could get some of that glue that they do um, and then put that on the embossing folder that might work and so all I'm doing now is just lining up here with this line here and lining it up with this line here and then gently pressing it down. I don't want to press down too hard because otherwise this glue will stick to the back of my um, to my grid paper and then I won't be able to get it off. Um, so that one there and that one there. And then we need to do some more ribbon because we need to do the bottom ones and then we can stick the backing on. Hmm. Yeah, swiping the pad over the emboss pattern always works quite well yeah and yes it it's very messy Jeanette you're absolutely right <laughs> it is it is very messy and you just the easiest way to get the ink off then the embossing folder is just to run it under a tap if you just take the whole thing to the sink the stamping up ink pads are water based so that will come off really nicely and um, just run it under the tap and it'll be nice and clean leave it to air dry so I'm going to color this ribbon again So you are using the brush tip of your alcohol marker onto quite a rough surface. So don't press too hard or just accept that it's going to rough up the tip of your... I mean, I never really use those thick ones for colouring anyway. I always use the thin bullet type nib. Although this one is running out. No. Um, and then pop some more adhesive along here. And again, take your ruler and measure four centimetres. And then place your ribbon down. Four centimetres. Yeah, I know, a little bit of messy is good. Do like a little bit of messy crafting. And then pop your ribbon down there. Well, you're, you're going to like the upcoming class then. 
it's not too late to sign up for the class if you do want a kit class in the post you can live anywhere in the country um, as long as it is in the UK I can get them posted out to you um, so if you do want to take part in the, the class please do get in touch we'd love to hear from you um, and that's coming up in two weeks today so bookings close tomorrow and um, I'll be getting the kits made up and ready to send out so here's my backing that's just going to go on there like that just wondering if I've stuck my thing down the right way but I have pop some glue around the outside along the middle for good luck spin it over and then place that down so this is 11 and a half by 11 and a half I think this one's actually ever so slightly smaller um, just because I didn't want to waste the card that I had but it's all good with me I'm really not that fussy you can see there's a slight difference but if anyone's going to get this and turn it over and complain there's a smaller border on there or well, they don't deserve to have it in the first place is my opinion so there's our second frame so we need to decide what we're going to pop on there i'm going to say um may your season sparkle so may your season sparkle i think although i'm just not sure what i'm going to pop it on so i've got some scrap white and i might use these were the tasteful labels dies love these this is a good one do you like it's just it's not big enough just not big enough actually that one might be that's a that would be a better size let me cut one of those and see whether i like it or not whether it'll fit so i'm going to cut it and then st and then stamp it because we've gone back to cutting we just need to add in our thin embossing a thin die cutting sheet the die cutting adapter cut one of these out there's our label might stamp this one in blue just to mix it up between the two of them this would be lovely for a little girl's room wouldn't it it's really pretty so I'm just gonna try and fit this kind of in the center as I possibly can really May your season sparkle. So it's come off ever so slightly at the edge there, but I don't think that I don't think I mind. And then we'll grab a bar a Highland Heather. I wanted the May to be more on there than anything else. And um, our little snowflakes wherever he's gone somewhere. is the only problem with being a messy crafter try to find your stamps can anyone see them if not we'll have to use oh there they are they're already on a block right so we've got some highland heather this time we'll stamp off just ties the whole in thing in together if you had that blank then it would just look a little bit um 
bare, let's say. So I'm just going to trim that with a pair of snips. Again, I want to butt that up to the side. Really? Then I think I've got one of these cuts. Just a little banner at the top. Might want to cut that down a little bit. Didn't cut that very straight. Use a trimmer. So a little banner up there. I think we'll have some white snowflakes this time. So I've got some medium ones. Now do I stick with doing the same corners? Have a look, see what we think. Right, I think I want to cut some more Highland Heather ones. I don't think I want as many white on there as that, so I might put the white one like that. So let me grab some Highland Heather cardstock. And just cut a, a couple of little ones out. Wherever I put the dies, I put the dies somewhere as well. Oh, you're all very patient with me while I just basically sit here on camera and lose everything. Where have they gone? There we go. So many snowflakes. I'm going to cut a few of these little ones out, I think. Then we can use the pokey tool on our take your pick tool. I seriously can't get over the fact that these are only nine pounds for the whole tool. I have read that right, haven't I? Right, there we go. So let's pull that out of there. And I think, yeah, that just looks nice. Right, I might try a bigger one under there as well. And then just put the little white one there. I think there's quite a lot of white going on in the centre. So we need another scrap. yourselves for a second while I just find a little scrap of Highland Heather. But you're pleased I did most of this die cutting off camera to begin with. There we go. And I'm going to cut the medium sized snowflake this time. So this one. And let's see what that looks like. I might go back to the white. I might have actually preferred the... No, I quite like that. I think that looks good. So it's, do we want any more sparkle underneath here? Do we want some ribbon?
maybe, maybe let's just cut a little bit of that off. Just have that coming out the end. Over there, I think. I mean, it's such a small touch, you can barely see it really, but. Just adds a little something. No, I know, it's incredible, isn't it? I'm surprised by that. Right, let's pop some uh, glue on this lot and get it sticking down. A little bit of balmy blue glimmer just in that top corner and then we'll pop one of the white snowflakes on um i do find that tombow does stick onto glimmer but it takes a bit of time to dry so i'm just going to use a glue dot i'm just going to take my um, snowflake and pop a glue dot underneath there just dry that a little bit quicker or stick that a little bit quicker than waiting for the Tombow. And I'm going to do this off my project because I've put glue on here and because it's holes all in this snowflake, what you don't want to do is stick it down and then realise that you've stuck it to your project underneath. Um, and then hold my thumb over the two that I'm not going to glue, glue the rest of them and then stick that one down. like that on there. I'm going to stick this down with a tiny little bit of um, thin red tape. Oh, do you know what? This would work really well with photos. Actually, that's what I designed it for. I've done one for my, well, I'm doing one for my um, Russ's sisters for Christmas. Um, obviously, I can't show you that because it's going to be a Christmas present. So I thought I wanted to do this, um, but just as a kind of decoration rather than a photo one but yeah the, the original one has got photos in the middle I should have said that so let's pull this red tape off I think it went about there but we'll just test it and see Yeah, that'll do. I'm not too fussy. Just kind of want it straight. There we go. And then we'll pop this down. Oh, Mo, I'm really pleased you really like it. It's coming up with different ideas sometimes. Like you said in your email, it's quite can be quite a challenge. Um, and I kind of lost my mojo this week and then russ was saying why don't you make this why don't you make that why don't you make the other bless him he's very good comes up with lots of ideas um but then i saw something similar to this they'd actually done it differently they hadn't used gray board um so, but something similar to this on pinterest and i know um my upline rachel has uh, done a couple of these before and they look so effective so i've just used tombow onto that glimmer i'm just going to be careful and accepting that it hasn't dried properly yet so a bit of that onto there and then we'll stick that down i'm going to pop a couple of gems on there as well i think have you got the snowflakes mo i can't remember whether you've got these or not But they are really, really gorgeous. So I'm going to pop a couple of the bigger gems again, just in the centre here. And I might pop a little one. No, I don't think I will. I don't think it needs it. So that there is our second panel. So you can see it's just going to hang up like this and hang down 
and become a lovely little Christmas decoration. So I've got the third panel still to do. I will post a picture um, once it's complete. I'll be uploading the video to YouTube um, and I'll probably write a blog post to accompany it. Um, so this was the where the and this is going to be possibly a gift. Um, with a little gift box. So that was where it kind of started, the idea started with these gorgeous colours, Highland Heather and Balmy Blue. And then I've used the same papers to make this little um, hanging frame. Thank you, Anita. Oh, it looks so professional. What I love about making your own gifts is that you can make them however you want. I love the I love the gift box. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So I've got a template now. It was a, I went old school. It's a paper template, so I photocopied it. I hope I haven't thrown it away. Photocopied it out of the book, enlarged it, cut it out, drew round it. Um, so it was a proper old school um, template. This one, no dies, um, all cut by hand. Um, and then you've got the, the opening. So it just pushes down inside there, and then the ribbon just comes up through and cuts those open with a little card and you've got yourself a gorgeous gorgeous gift set so that's all from me today i will see you all again in two weeks unless i pop on under an impromptu facebook live at some time next week but i don't know if i will um i won't see you next week because it's on stage and then the week after that is the class um so yeah Thanks very much for joining me. I hope you have a lovely day, whatever you're doing. I've got to go and do the weekly shop, so that's going to keep me busy. And um, then off to work for me tonight. Have a lovely day and a nice weekend, seeing as it's Friday. And I will see you all again very, very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.